Ugh, I hate this map. Yeah, worst map ever. I'm totally dodging. It's the same conversation in the agent select screen every single time Riot releases a new Valorant map. I guess it kind of makes sense too, since everyone will have worse crosshair placement, aim, and game sense on the new map, and obviously playing badly is less fun than winning, so every new map will get some negative feedback. Fracture appears to be a whole different beast when it comes to map design, clearly something the designers intended. By flipping the paradigm of how attackers and defenders are distributed, Riot has given everyone's finely tuned tactical shooter brains a bit of a shakeup. My first games on Fracture felt like there were a million angles to watch and always ended with me getting shot from behind. Even now, I struggle with knowing where I should be on defense and when to play aggressively or wait for backup. After finally getting to study a few of the first pro matches played on the map, I came away with some pretty solid ideas of how to better play Fracture. One of the first problems to solve on a new map is the viability of each agent in the game. Map geometry, verticality, and the paths for rotation all play a big role in determining how abilities will interact with the map. As expected from a newer map, there's some variety in how teams are approaching Fracture, but aside from Jet's omnipresence, some of the other popular picks might surprise you. While most maps seem to be favoring Killjoy, Cypher is the clear winner here on Fracture. With so many angles to worry about, Cypher's ability to tripwire the flanks, watch faraway angles with his camera, and lurk on the opposite side of the map gives him much more flexibility than being tied to the range of your bots, like Killjoy. Breach also made an appearance on basically every successful lineup. His ability to flash at long range around corners helps a ton with taking early map control. The bigger benefit for Breach though is his ability to hit multiple levels of the map with his stun and ultimate. You'll see over and over how teams are using his ultimate to completely clear a site with multiple verticals or sweep through the entire middle of the map and catch defenders on rotation. As for smokes, three agents did all of the work. By now, we're accustomed to how good Viper is at blocking up multiple angles and making easy lanes onto the site with her wall. Astra is also a big player on Fracture thanks to tons of choke points and the flexibility to smoke anywhere on the map from anywhere on the map. The biggest surprise was the use of Brimstone by Team Liquid who won the event. Brim offers two main things on Fracture, three smokes at once, which helps cover all the important angles, and his ultimate can fully clear the upper and lower areas of places like A site and B tower. One final agent worth mentioning is Sage. Sage has shown on maps like Icebox that anytime a map has too many angles to watch, being able to create your own walls is incredibly useful. We can see time and again Sage using the wall to block off a key angle of attack or create a safe lane to cross onto a site and hold post plants from. Every map has specific powerful positions that are vital to controlling how a round plays out. On Fracture, there are a few main areas that the pro players focused on fighting for. The easiest to understand are the opping angles where a skilled jet can do tons of damage. Those are here on a main which stops attackers from getting to the door and also allows you to fall back and watch the upper entrance from dish if necessary. On B site, the two long angles are at stairs and from the middle of spawn which can help fight for the area in front of tower. Speaking of tower, the teams that that one on Fracture constantly fought for control of this upper hallway on both attack and defense, and whoever won the battle seemed to almost always win the round. Finally, it goes without saying that controlling the defender's spawn in the middle of the map is important, and this is another reason for the 3 and 2 setup that most teams were running on defense. On A site, two players were generally needed to watch main and the door, while one could lock down pressure from dish. On B, one player would watch both entrances to middle, while the other kept the tower and site on lockdown. Positioning is always the hardest thing to figure out on a new map, but after watching these matches, it's pretty clear what works on Fracture. Almost every single attack round featured some sort of split, with usually four players on one side of the zipline and one player lurking elsewhere. The four players would pressure one of the sites, forcing noisy rotations and allow for the lurker to find either easy kills or deep positional advantage. Based off of what the lurker was able to do, or how much damage the four players could do, the attacking team would hit the site and allow the lurker to follow up, or rotate to the lurker, and usually leave one of the four behind to take over the lurking role. On defense, the primary setup seemed to be three players on A and two on B, and this makes sense because A is more complex of a site and the defense needs to worry about an early split through the door in A main. 
On defense, we talked about the importance of tower control and the remaining defender can float somewhere in the middle while keeping an eye on both main entrances to the site. Ultimately, keeping control of the middle of the map is the most important part of defense to be able to out-rotate the attackers. So with all of that added context, I don't actually think Fracture is a bad map, and despite how tough it might feel now, I think it will end up being one of the more interesting ones to watch in the professional scene. In fact, those of you who remember old Counter-Strike maps like CS Assault might get a kick out of thinking of Fracture kind of like an Assault style map, where you can basically attack the entrenched enemy defenders from all sides. Thanks for watching, and good luck.